Colin and welcome to How to Paint Watercolours. So if you're ready, we'll get started and we'll paint this one. Hello YouTubers and welcome back to my channel, How to Paint Watercolours with me Colin. So I'm just leaving a thin film of water on the paper. It's been stretched. Right, Naples Yellow. Would may just dry off around the farmhouse, bringing it down over the background hills. We will be putting them in one at a time and separate, so we'll be allowing the paint to drift down the hill and then we'll be drying them off so we can move to the next one. Indian yellow, this just a little, just to give it a bit of brightness. French Ultramarine and Alizarin Crimson. I've made two washes of this, well three washes. One's to the blue side that's reasonably weak, which is this one. I even think that's just a little bit too strong. And one is made to the stronger side. And one is made to the red side. Just dropping in in places the stronger one. And I'm using the Turner paints again today. They're affordable artist quality and they certainly do not break the bank. I think that's about all I want to do to the sky. I might bring some Naples yellow in here. Around the farm cottage. Maybe some Indian yellow here. Just creating a bright spot. A little bit pale through here. Just want to dry the river off. And I think we'll just drop in some yellow green, Indian yellow and French ultramarine. Make some beautiful greens with this. Using the middle green, I've got three greens made up from the same. Engine yellow, French ultramarine. This is a little bit greener. Once again, just making sure they just keeping the river dry for the moment. And I'll just show you the strong, stronger green. Engine yellow, French ultramarine. Stroking some in up the hill. I just want to shoot in a little bit of French ultramarine on its own. Just to add that little extra colour. And now we're going to leave this to dry. Now that that's dry, I've just set the board at about a 20 degree angle. And this is a little stronger version of the French Ultramarine and the Lizard and Crimson. I'm just going to put it in here, just along this ridge line. Quite strong this. I'm just going to water it down. <laughs> it's a little bit too strong. And I'm just going to add a, a little bit of the uh, redder shade into it. Hardly noticeable, but it, it is there. I'm just going to very gently soften the bottoms off and I'm just going to re-wet this back hill first, well this back mountain first, some clean water. French Ultramarine and Elizabeth Crimson again. Well this is the sky colour wash, it's more of a blue colour. really want this to go on quite pale. So you almost can't see it as it reaches that back hill. And I just want to drop a tiny bit of the red into that. And I'll just see if this will scrape out just a, a few crags. Just 
soften the bottom of this hill and then we're going to allow that to dry okay now your background hills are dry we come to the next one and I'm just going to re-wet this once again to about there because I want to put some rocks and crags in the top of this one I'm just bringing this down to about there I think and once again some of the sky colour French Ultramarine and Lizard and Crimson to that again I just want to drop some of the red version just scuffling it in softening off the bottom and taking some of my yellow green Indian yellow and French ultramarine just bringing this up to meet it and on the ridge line French ultramarine again with Indian yellow but this one has the, the green bias to it it's more greeny ultramarine and burnt umber it's very in shades I've done here so I'm just going to move to the the lighter one which is in the middle paling it off as we come out into this corner here soften it off remove excess off the bottom taking some clean water once again and just where the house is the farmhouse I'm just going to brighten this spot a little bit more some cadmium yellow light as this will sit on top of the Indian yellow that's in here softening the bottom off of this as well and then we're just going to leave this to dry a moment or two and then we'll scrape in some crags and rocks in the top of this little mountain here okay it's been about five minutes I'm just going to try this I'm just using a oil painting painting knife again with a damp brush just softening the bottom gently softening the bottom of this as well and we're going to leave this to dry completely now that that's dry I'm just going to take some clean water and I'm just going to come up to this ridge line here where this hill is scalloped out and we'll put the the light side into it I'll leave a link in the description box um, if you want to have a, a look at these uh, Turner paints um, if you do decide to buy some if you actually use the link it will help me out as well some of the yellow green Indian yellow and ultramarine just softening it out slightly just going to darken the middle green down a bit so I'm just adding French ultramarine to it to make it a slightly darker green it down a bit more softening the edges in this is your third set of green the really darker one Pulling this down the way the, the land is shaped. And then I on it while I just keep gently softening it. Soften this into the middle ground here. We have to leave this little bit to dry off as well. Now that that's dry, I'm just going to re-wet the back side of this hill and this side of the hill will be darker because it will be in shadow and helps to give more interest into your painting. So I'm just re-wetting this and I've just taken some French Ultramarine and added a little bit more to the other colour just to make it a little darker. In we go. French Ultramarine once again with uh, Indian yellow to make the green and while it's like that I'm just going to throw some of the really dark in and 
mopping up the bottom. Then at the same time with this I want to drop some burnt sienna with a touch of burnt umber in with it. And into it I also want to drop some of the sky colour in as well as a slight shadow from the sky but not too much. Some clean water here again as well. Onto the shoreline. So again some of the yellow green. Straight in with the dark green. Just re-wetting this side of the river bank and where the house is, farmhouse. Once again some of the yellow green. Cadmium yellow light once again just to bring the shine back into this. Just moving into the stronger greens. Just darkening this um, violet down with some burnt sienna. Pulling it gently back through the colour just helps to define the shoreline on the river. It's also marine and burnt umber. Then salt marine and sepia just drizzled in in places. Softening this edge in. And I just want to take a weak, weak wash, a very weak wash of uh, French Ultramarine. I want a stronger colour here. Same colour, French Ultramarine. Peel it off where it comes into the ground so it doesn't look like you've stuck it on. Okay, and we're going to have to leave this to dry. I've mixed up a little blue grey from Cobalt Blue and Burnt Sienna. I'm just going to put it on this roof as we begin just to change its colour. This is a, a little bit darker colour. Same mixture just with more Burnt Sienna in it. Breaking open the uh, mop brush. I'm just going to put a few bushes in here. Just a few trees. Then with the rigger brush, some burnt sienna and sepia. Just bring in some tree trunks and branches. Move to a little darker one, move into a darker colour, burnt ultramarine, burnt umber, just soften these in, we'll have to wait for that to dry I think. So we're going to have to leave this to dry and then we can finish the house off because I don't want the paint to bleed into anything and then we can finish it off by putting in the river. So we have to allow this to dry and then we can put the house in and finish the house off. I'm just going to take a little clean water once again and I'm just going to run it under the eave of this house or this little cottage. This little one as well. And I also want a shadow across the roof. Just picking out a few roofing tiles. Some shadow on the windows and door frame. Put some windows in. Just want to throw a little shadow forward. 
softening it out slightly. It's a little shadow where these trees are. Soften that out a little bit. And we can also add just a little bit of dark underneath. Come to the river, clean water once again, and just re-wet the river area. Just mimicking the sky colours really, but I'm going to put some Fensils of Marine in first. A little touch of the Indian yellow. A little touch of the Naples yellow. To your sky wash now, French ultramarine and alizarin crimson. All horizontal strokes. And I want a stronger version. Don't see any in sepia, just mimicking the shoreline. I'll just drop a little bit of grey in. Then salt marine and lizard and crimson again, but this is the red violet. Just taking some of the green and I'm just mixing some of the French salt marine and burnt umber into it just to really really darken it down. And just in the foreground here. One or two long grasses out. Soften the bottom off of this green. Maybe one or two blades of grass over here. It's just to add uh, a tiny bit of interest into the foreground. Soften this into the foreground. All the edges softened off. Checking, do I need to add anything else? I think what I might just do is just reinforce the shoreline a little bit. Okay, and now I'm just going to leave all that to dry. Okay, we're very close to finishing it now, so I think what we'll do is I'll just turn the board round. I'm going to take a ruler and I'm just going to put some wind streaks and some movement into the water. Right. Let's make sure they're straight and level. And if you've enjoyed this video, uh, please click the like button and subscribe. Subscribers are always welcome. Be my guest to leave a comment. thing to do well a couple just two things to do really one I'm just going to pop in a couple of birds and then you get round to the best bit this is where you get to sign it and mount it and frame it and once again I'd like to thank you all very much for watching thank you